Well, back onto the kitchen. I do not have any power in here. I don't plan on putting any power in here. But to have some lighting at night, I'm gonna go ahead and mount these brackets so I can hang my lanterns in here. I've got a lot of these poles to strip. I'm down to about, I don't know, I think four of them that I've got to strip. This one wasn't coming off very easy, so I had to get my draw knife out, set it up, and get it all cleaned up. Where's Isla? She's on the porch. That's good. Good girl. All right, I gotta clean up all this shit now. It's springtime here, and springtime means lots of cleaning up. I do take a lot of my yard debris, and I will put it around my fence line. The deeper I can get this, the less things grow through it. So that's how I kind of maintain some of my fence line. Now I've got a bunch of these two inch planks that I cut maybe a year and a half ago. They've been sitting around, they've been fairly weathered. They're nice and dry. I'm gonna go ahead and set these up and get them sanded. And then I'm gonna use some of these as shelving inside the kitchen. Now I've built this kitchen with very minimal tools. <laughs> I do not have a table saw, so it's hard for me to get a flat edge on some of these. So I do have to set these back up on the mill, get them dialed in the best I can, and then I'll skiff the back edge to get them as square as I possibly can for the shelving. Once these are all cut and sanded and prepped, I'll go ahead and put some linseed oil on them. And then in the morning, I ended up putting some lacquer on them. Let these dry that day, and then I went ahead and installed them in the kitchen. Anybody who's living this off-grid life has probably watched Dick Prenticke shows. And when he did his cabin, he put a little shelf in there and he doweled it as he put it in. And I've always wanted to do that, and this was my chance to get it done. Oh, dinner tonight, out in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm out here at about nine o'clock at night. Just pretty much got dark, maybe 15 minutes ago. But I've drilled these holes, so I just dowel these and put them in place. And that's working out pretty good so far. So I'm out here doing the second one. <laughs> Probably shouldn't do it at night, right? <laughs> we'll see how close I can get it this time. Here again, I've got limited tools. <laughs> so when I went ahead and did this, I used a one inch spade bit and I've drilled all these holes by hand. I laid them out on the shelf by hand. So let's see how good this one goes together. It's a little more difficult with three than two. <laughs> it's gonna work. It's gonna work. Ha! Ha! Heck yeah. Heck yeah. 
So, man. I get so lucky sometimes when I lay that out. It fits perfect. Perfect for me. <laughs> okay, you're not going to believe this. But I've got three more broody chickens. So I've got the old chicken that went broody again. The black one. And then this one here is getting pushed out. Because <laughs> I don't have enough nesting boxes for them to do what they need to. So I'm going to have to build three more new nesting boxes over here. Dinner tonight. Got some of my broccoli out of the garden even. <laughs> scrap material I've had laying around so this piece didn't quite fit um, but it'll separate the box just fine and this will all be held together I'm just gonna mount it to the back of here onto the side of the cage be fine Well, hopefully you'll use them. There's three more for you. And I've kind of got them crooked like that. I've got to see if there's some way I can get that top beam on here and put together so I can lift this up in one piece. I tried to put this in the truck and it's not gonna fit. So I'm trying. I'll have to see if I can take it out there with the car, I guess. So my neighbor drove by and he seen I was trying to, I was struggling trying to put this back on the cart to get it up here. And he says, let me just go get my truck and we'll, I'll help you out. So he did that, which made this much easier to do. And uh, I've got it up here in place. I'm just checking the fits of these first before I do anything. So I want to make sure both of these slots are going to fit just nice. So this is a fir log. This is a pine log and this is a pine log. These are six and a half inch or six and a half feet tall, and this is a 16 footer. And that's basically going to go on the edge of the porch to create my other roof here. I'm going to go ahead and take my chainsaw and clean these up, make sure they're as flat as I can get them. Now, nothing's perfect here, everything's pretty much by eyeball. So I do my best, but I want you to realize that when I put all this stuff together, nothing is ever perfect. Now, I will go ahead and put my level on this and get them as level as I possibly can. These are logs, so they're not perfect, obviously, but I'll get them as close as I possibly can and get both of these mounted into place before I decide how I'm going to put the top on this. Now this one piece was just a little bit long. I thought I'd break it and yeah, it smacked me in the head.
Now this top log is pretty darn heavy. It's not totally dry yet. So I've got to figure out some way to get it up onto something and then decide how I'm going to get it up here. I'm, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet. I'm still debating on what I'm going to do. So I decided to take the ramps off the mill and I can go ahead and mount these at an angle. I got my neighbor over here to help me out and then we're going to go ahead and lift this one little click at a time, see if we can get it on the top. Okay. You ready? Yep. This one fell in the edge, I can tell. Not bad. I'm going to roll it back. Roll it back. There we go. That's where we want that flat kind of right there as we go up. Ready? Yep. Thank you so much. Well, my chair's outside and I'm too lazy to go get it. So anyway, I hope everybody's having a fantastic morning as always. A uh, couple things I wanted to talk about. Um, you know, you see Isla around here and she's doing a really good job. Don't get me wrong, but she has her moments. And uh, without my yard being totally fenced in, she loves to wander up on the mountain. And uh, obviously when it's really hot, she likes to hit the creek down there. Um, so it's, it's been quite a struggle to keep her in the yard and keep an eye on her without her roaming. She has her good days and she has her bad days. Sometimes she'll go two straight days and, and never leave the yard and always hang out here. Other days, uh, she'll run off and I can't find her for an hour. <laughs> so, um, you know, to keep up on all of that, it, it's, it's tough sometimes and it's, uh, it's a little frustrating on my end when I when I lose track of her and I can't find her. And yeah, I get frustrated just like anybody else. So when she comes back, she knows she's in trouble um, because she's got to get tied up out there by her kennel. So I think sometimes now uh, she just doesn't want to come back for a while because she knows when she gets back here, she's going to be tied up. Anyway, uh, I just don't want you to think she was absolutely a perfect dog. In so many ways, she is. <laughs> but she has her moments just like each and every one of us. The other thing I want to talk about is I had some visitors here. So my parents came up and seen me for about three days. There was about three days that I didn't video anything. I didn't really get much done out in the yard. We sat around and visited quite often, quite a bit and uh, you know, made some dinners, went to town and, and had some dinners in town, which I don't get to go out to eat very often. So when somebody comes and sees me, it's kind of a treat for me to go to town and uh and eat in town <laughs> we had some pizza uh we went to a, a mongolian barbecue place and we also went to a fish and chip place so it's kind of nice i i don't go out to eat by myself ever <laughs> but uh, when somebody does come up and see me it's a nice break for me to go out and uh, have somebody else cook for me <laughs> the other thing i was going to mention is i don't have a whole bunch in this video and the reason for that is i've been cleaning cleaning this and cleaning that and raking up this and raking up that and I don't really know how much you want to watch me clean around here because there's been hours and hours of me just weeding areas, raking areas, cleaning up areas. So just realize that, that, that there's a lot of cleaning that goes on around here that is basically behind the scenes that I don't necessarily video all of it because cleaning isn't that much fun to watch. I know that. So I don't really video all of that. I know you like to see the projects that happen and so on and so forth. The other thing I was going to talk about is I got a lot more planted in the garden. So I've got my peppers and my tomatoes. I'll go ahead and show you some of that. I didn't really video any of that because a lot of it's really getting really hot here. And a lot of times when I'm out in the garden, uh, not a lot of times, but quite often it's sunny out there and I'm pretty much stripped down to my underwear. So I know nobody wants to see me standing out in my garden in my underwear. But I do that to get my sunlight, you know, my vitamin D. Uh, you know, I don't keep covered up. I'm not scared of the sun. I don't sit out in the sun for hours, but I like to get my sunlight. And to do that, I'm usually doing it in the garden. So I wait till it gets a little sunny out there on 
you know, starts getting sunny in the garden and at that time it's going to be 80 degrees. So a lot of times I'm stripped down to my underwear or I just have my shorts on. <laughs> so I don't video a lot of that because, you know, nobody, not everybody wants to see a 56 year old body out there uh, stripped down. <laughs> but anyway, I'll show you what's in the garden. I'm not going to have quite as big of a garden this year as I usually do. Uh, my diet has changed a little bit and I'm eating a lot more protein. So I'm really focused on securing most of my meat this year, which like I've talked about, half a beef. And then with three more broody chickens, the seven I'm going to take here in a little while, I should have plenty of chicken to last me all year also. And when I process those birds, I don't process them in a full chicken. I basically lay them on their back. I slit them open. I take their breasts. I break their pelvis. I take a, a, a leg and a thigh in one shot. So two, two breasts, legs and thighs, and that's all I take out of that chicken. Now with Isla here, I will go ahead and take uh, probably some hearts, some gizzards, and some livers out of some of them. I probably won't do them all, but I will take some of those, and she will get some of them. Um, she does like the necks, so there will probably be a couple of those that I'll keep. Uh, I might throw them in my fridge or in the freezer just to give to her at a later date. So that's kind of how I'll take care of that. That's why my garden isn't going to be quite as big this year. Next year when I extend the garden, I'll probably work on the garden a little bit more and be a little bit more involved next year. But this year I wanted to get the kitchen done and basically secure all my protein, all my meat for this year. So anyway, I hope everybody's having a fantastic morning as always. I'll talk to you again soon. I love you guys. So up here I've got some strawberries here and then I've got some potatoes there going. Right here I've got uh, tomatoes, flour, tomato, flour, tomato, 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 tomato. And then down here I've got more potatoes growing here. And then this is just tomato, flour, tomato, flour. And then in this bed here I went ahead and put all my peppers in. So that bed's full of peppers. My onions are just about ready to take. And these flowers up here are doing great.